Using a 10 millimeter wrench, we're going to go ahead and disconnect our battery terminals. And set those aside. I'm going to go ahead and remove these six plastic pins holding the radiator shroud in place. Using our trim tool, go ahead and pop out these center buttons. And pop out the clip. Do this for all six. And grab the trim and we're going to pull it backward. And we'll pull this out here, get both sides out. Go ahead and set that aside. Next, we want to go ahead and remove these two plastic buttons here using our trim tool. Let's pop those out. Now we can go ahead and separate this upper portion of our intake from our lower. Let's go ahead and get our socket and extensions onto this 10 millimeter right here. Go ahead and remove that bolt there. We can remove our lower intake tube. We're going to remove our battery hold down bracket. We're going to use our 10 millimeter socket to loosen and remove these bolts uh, or the nuts with the J hooks. Okay, remove the battery. I want to go ahead and remove our tray here. We have to disconnect our harness from this tray. I'm just going to use our trim tool. Pop that button out and pull the tray out. Using a 10 millimeter socket, I want to go ahead and remove this bolt here, holding our bracket and wiring harness here. Pop that off, set that aside. I'm gonna go ahead and put the screw right back in place. Go 
remove our coolant reservoir. I want to go ahead and disconnect our expansion hose here to the radiator. I'm going to use a pair of pliers and gently grab this hose and twist that off. Don't squeeze too hard. You don't want to crack the port on the radiator. Grab the expansion tank and we're gonna pull directly up on this. The unit is held in place by this back section, just pressed into a retainer tab here. Let's go ahead and set that aside. I'm gonna go down right between the two fans and there's gonna be a wiring harness right there. Go ahead and separate that harness from the fan. That's gonna expose the two connectors. Now I wanna go ahead and disconnect the plug. Have that separated. Remove these two 10 millimeter bolts. fan. Go ahead and pull that up and out. Right here is our drain valve for our radiator. I want to go ahead and drain the coolant out of the radiator. We're going to go ahead and slide a catch can underneath. The coolant should run right through this section right here and into our can. Go ahead and reach down. Open this up. While that's draining, we go ahead and open up our radiator cap. Remove that. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. And take your radiator cap, line that up and twist that on. The studs or posts into the radiator mount. Once those drop in, we'll install our two bolts on the top. Let's go ahead and snug those down. You want to lightly tighten these down. When it bottoms out, just go a little bit more. You're just holding plastic to plastic. So you should be good. You want to reach down front, grab your harness, slide that up and lock that into the other connector and it'll snap right into place. Using a 10 millimeter socket, let's go ahead and loosen these clamps. Set that intake tube aside. I'm going to use pliers, loosen and remove this, and pull this hose off. There's a 10 mil bolt right here holding this bracket with the harness. I'm just going to throw that bolt back in here. On the top of the throttle body, I'm going to remove the bolt for this bracket here. Go ahead and disconnect this connector here. Push down on that tab and try and work this back. To remove this hose here from our intake, 
and use our pick. Work that off, set that aside. There are four 12 millimeter bolts holding our throttle body to the intake. Here, 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 and there's one on the back side. Let's get it loosened and remove those. Bracket on the back side here. We're going to use our mallet to gently tap our throttle body loose. Go ahead and make sure that all of our components are separated and clear of our intake. Let's remove the bolts for the intake. We're using our 12 millimeter socket and extension for this. side of the intake area there's going to be vacuum lines and pop these free from the little plastic retainer and just stretch those aside there on the bottom side right here I'm going to go ahead and pull off that vacuum intake and then gently work that outward on the back side you can see we have a in the vacuum port here I'm gonna pop this off and then go ahead and grab our pliers and release that clamp right there the intake. I'm going to use some paper towels and stuff them inside the intake ports here because we don't want anything to fall down inside here. Using a pair of needle nose pliers, I'm going to go ahead and pinch our little retainer tab here, pop that harness out, tuck that aside. On our lower radiator hose, we have this water neck right here. It's held on by a spring clip. So we're going to get underneath the front of it here and pull the retainer tab and pull this off. Once that's off, we'll go ahead and start to remove these bolts down around the flange right here. You know, obviously at this point here, our cooling system has been drained. There might be a little bit of residual coolant still in here. So keep your catch can underneath. I'm gonna use our pick, go in and Pop our spring clip like so. There we go. I'm 
I'm just going to reinstall our little retainer here. I'll go ahead and tuck that aside. Using a 10 millimeter socket, I want to go ahead and remove the three bolts on this water neck here. So to get into this position here, we're using our 10 millimeter deep socket with a short extension very close to our cooling fan here. thermostat and the last bolt. We'll go ahead and work our extension and socket out and set that aside. Now this housing here uses three bolts to secure it. They're 10 millimeter. These two here, you're not going to be able to really see them while we're removing the bolts. We're going to go ahead and use some sockets, extensions, and wrenches to get to these here. The top one we can see from the very top, so that'll be an easy one to get to. So let's go ahead and get these bolts removed. So we are using our quarter inch socket and extension with ratchet. bolts out. We're going to use our 10 mil bent wrench here to get down and behind. This gets us around the AC lines and right to the head of that bolt underneath. So once we get the bolt loose, we're able to switch over to our quarter inch extension swivel and a short 10 mil socket to try and continue to remove this bolt. All right, we got our bottom bolt removed. So we left our third bolt up top here. That's gonna help us stabilize this here while we go ahead and remove this clamp. I'm gonna spin this here. Okay, work that up. And go ahead and pull this hose up and off. This hose here is a metal line, uh, metal hose, and there's an O-ring inside here that holds us pretty snug. I'm going to go ahead and remove this bolt here, and then we'll try and work this off of the metal hose. I'm going to go ahead and loosen this harness from this retainer tab. Our metal coolant tube here has a 12 millimeter bolt right here. We're going to go ahead and remove that bolt. This is going to allow us to loosen this unit and we'll try and twist our housing off of this. I'm just using a small pry bar to try and work this a little bit back and forth.
So a little bit of persistence working that off the rubber O-ring there. We now have our housing removed. On the aluminum here where the water neck was attached to, we do have some corrosion on here. So if we want to go ahead and clean this, we're going to uh, use some solvent, wipe this down, and then we're going to use a little bit of uh, very light, uh, light abrasive sandpaper and clean this up. Let's go ahead and take our hose here. We're going to slide that up into place. So I'm going to move this down, make sure we can get this lined up. I'm going to go ahead and get our upper bolt lined up. We'll get that threaded in a couple threads. Get this threaded in, and I'm going to get the bolt in probably about 90% of the way. I'm just going to leave it a little loose so I can have a little bit of adjustability there. I'm going to go ahead and try and get that lower bolt lined up. Same here, get that bolt started a few threads. Go ahead and get that back bolt lined up. Let's go ahead and get all three of those snugged down. Good torque down the bolts here to 8.7 foot pounds. I'm going to repeat for the other two. Let's go ahead and install our bolt right here. And go ahead and snug that down. Install the rear hose. install your thermostat. Make sure that the O-ring on your thermostat housing here is in good shape. If it is not, you want to go ahead and replace this unit. Ours is in good shape, so we want to go ahead and bring this down, set that into place. We want to get our upper bolt lined up and get that started a few threads. Let's go ahead and get the other two bolts installed. I'm going to go ahead and snug down all of our bolts here for the thermostat unit here. Right. Once that's snug, go ahead and repeat for the other two. And torque down these three bolts to 8.7 foot pounds. Install your lower radiator hose and push our retainer clip back on. Take your wiring harness, go ahead and clip this back in over here. I'm going to go ahead and install our harness onto our bracket right here. Take our studs. 
I'm going to put a little bit of ANC's compound on there. I'm going to go ahead and thread these in. We had to remove these here to clean up the surface of the, the intake here. Install our vacuum port here. Pop this into its retainer clip right here. Then we have our vacuum hose right here. We want to clip onto the bottom. Before we get our intake installed, I want to go ahead and be sure to pull out our towels. Go ahead and install the two top nuts on the studs. Just going to get those threaded a few threads. Just going to check around our intake, make sure there's nothing causing any interference. Go ahead and get our bolts installed. Go ahead and install your vacuum hose right here. Our retaining clip for our vacuum hoses would normally go on in the intake here, but our clip is broken. So we're just gonna rest our hoses on the side right now and we'll have to go ahead and replace this clip. Go ahead and snug down all of our bolts on our intake. Go ahead and torque down our intake manifold bolts to 16 foot-pounds. Let's install our throttle body. We need to get our two backing plates in with the nuts on there. There's going to be one that goes behind this harness, behind the intake. Get our throttle body lined up. And we're going to start by getting one bolt on the top here. You feed it through the intake. And start threading it into that little bracket there.
once we have that upper bolt started, we'll go ahead and do the same on this side here. Let's go ahead and get our lower bolts in. Let's get all four of these snug down. Good and torque these bolts on to 16 foot pounds. We're gonna go ahead and attach our harness. So connect this connector here. Snap that into place. Get our bracket lined up, get our bolt installed here. Then down below, we have our lower bracket. Go ahead and get that bolted in. That threads into one of the ports in the intake. Install your coolant reservoir by sliding it into this little mounting bracket here. Simply line that up. Go ahead and install your lower air intake tube. Go ahead and install our bracket here. Go ahead and snug that down. Now on our air intake tube, you wanna go ahead and line up this bushing here with this mounting hole right here. You wanna also make sure the air intake tube is connected down into the fender well intake tube. Let's get to install our bolt. Before we tighten down the bolt to secure the intake tube here, let's go ahead and get our upper portion of the intake popped into place here. Snap that into place. And then that'll help us line up our ports right here, or our holes for our plastic retainers. Install your retainers. Once these are in, let's go ahead and tighten down that bolt down below. You just want to snug that down into place and install our battery tray base. Let's go ahead and lower our battery down into place.
install our battery trim here. Let's go ahead and install our J-hook. Get our nut installed. Now that this is in place, let's go ahead and repeat for the other side. Lower our J-hook down. Now with these installed, we just want to snug these down just so that it holds the battery in place. So once that's snug, go ahead and repeat for the other side. You can install your terminals. Go ahead and snug these down. Go ahead and get your ground installed and do the same here. Go ahead and feed this through your hood release handle. And this trim here should go underneath our bumper cover here. So you want to gently work this underneath and work your way right around. Do this until we get all the way down to the driver's side. Let's go ahead and pop in our plastic buttons here. I'm going to go ahead and remove your radiator cap. You're going to go ahead and grab a funnel, a nice clean funnel, and go ahead and get this set up. I'm going to go ahead and fill up the radiator with the recommended uh, coolant for the manufacturer on this vehicle. You want to go ahead and start up your vehicle. You want to let it run for about 20 to 25 minutes. You're going to add coolant as necessary. Once everything has been operating for a little bit and the thermostat has opened up and consumed your, your uh, coolant that is in the reservoir here or in the, your funnel, you want to go ahead and top that off. At that point there, I'm going to go ahead and remove our funnel unit. Remove our adapter here and go ahead and install your radiator cap. Now you want to go for a road test, check it out, let the vehicle cool down. Do not remove this cap after you've gone for a road test and tested everything. You want to also check your expansion tank. Make sure that the coolant level is in the proper full mark as well. At that point there, once your coolant and everything has been topped off, then you're good to go.